I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susi. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city on earth. Bop, bop, boom. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the most haunted city on earth. My name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And I'm JT Timmons. And we have a special episode for all of our Ohio listeners. Yes, we're going to talk about ghosts of Ohio. Ohio. We have a lot of uh, Ohio, Ohio is, is, is very haunted. It is. Uh, yeah, it's, no, it's, it's extremely worth, haunted it's, spot. It's worth mentioning. Yeah. yeah. We have a lot of uh, Ohio listeners, actually. Yeah. Uh, like oh. a, a ton. Yeah. I mean, when I'm looking at the demographics analytics, you know, our pair junkie president, Ashley Werner, she yeah. uh, <laughs> she is um, uh, from o- she Ohio. is an Ohioan. Not in, for long, but. Not for long. She's yeah. moving down here. But yeah, that, and then <clears throat> um, uh, I think that Ohio's like our, what is it? It's California, surprisingly, is our number mm-hmm. one state. It's a big state. It's, and then uh, second is uh, uh, Texas. Also a big state. Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. And then Georgia, and then Ohio, and then um, the city of Seattle is our biggest, most, like, I swear, if y'all showed up at Seattle, y'all might get recognized. <laughs> like, wow. yeah, you're like, well, let's we go have, get some free Starbucks. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, y'all, we, we have loads of listeners from Seattle. Loads. Ah. It's our number one city. It's closely followed by Los Angeles. Well, there you go. Yeah. Cl- nice. And then Atlanta. Wow. So, uh, well, today is for the Ohioans yes. and everybody who listens to this podcast, because this is a fun episode. Uh, we're going to talk about the Ohio State Reformatory, uh, which you might recognize from Shawshank Redemption. Mm-hmm. They ah, filmed yes. it in this uh, no. prison. What? Yes. It's true. Yes. They notice. Yes, it is. I love Shawshank Redemption. It's also in uh, Tango and Cash. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's, it's, it's a fairly high filmed location. I think it is a, a film location for numerous uh, movies, but, but Shawshank Redemption would be the, the yeah. most recognized. They say one. that Shawshank Redemption is one of the uh, most perfect movies ever. I made. agree. I would agree with that it's, as well. It's, it's near perfect. If you look it up on IMDb, it has one of the highest scores on IMDb. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. That, The Godfather, those, mm-hmm. those are the two. Um, Scarface is really high, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So if you ever wondered why Shawshank Redemption looks so creepy on the inside mm-hmm. uh, when they're filming, uh, it's because it is. Yep, um, it is. <laughs> I wonder if there are stories from the cast members of, you know, of that's, strange things occurring. That's actually no, a really no, call Tim Robbins. And, yeah, yeah, give Tim Robbins a call. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Some, Morgan Freeman. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> um, but it definitely has a loaded history. Uh, so... The Ohio State Reformatory was designed by Cleveland architect Levi Scofield. Mm. (laughs) Um, (laughs) (laughs) Um, Is it Scofield or Scofield? Scofield, Scofield. Scofield, Scofield. Well, Scofield, peppers. Scofield. That's Scofield. Yeah. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, y'all. Scofield is also a weapons, uh, a gun Hmm. uh, manufacturer of the 1800s. Well, there you go. Oh. Um. Well, it was kind of the cornerstone of the reform era. It was a reform fortress, if you will, um, that was built in no- on November 4th, 1886. And it was on the site of the former Camp um, Mordecai Bartley, a training ground for Civil War soldiers. Okay. So that's a great place to build a prison. Yeah. Um, you know, it kind of looks still like a fort. It does. It does. It's built very similar to the way that you would build a fort, uh, yeah, an absolutely. outpost fort. Yeah. So the local community and its political leaders enthusiastically campaigned for the building of the reformatory, mainly because of the boost it would provide to the local uh, employment rate and economy. Sure. Uh, makes sense. Uh, so. And where is this again in Ohio? This? It's near Cleveland, yeah? Yes, it is. It okay. Is. It is. It's, uh, I will tell you exactly oh, where Cleveland. it is. Because you can still visit it today. Yeah, I think they run tours now. Oh, they run so many tours. <laughs> Do oh, really? do they? <laughs> they run so many tours. I think I remember there being a um, a Shawshank Redem- uh, Redemption tour. Mm. Mansfield. Mansfield, oh, Ohio. Mansfield, Ohio. Okay. Right. Duh. Dummy, I should have known that. Anyways. Um, 
Anyway, so uh, the building is made out of limestone, yes. first off. Okay. Bring it. Bring it to trap them ghosties. Am I, am I missing something? Yes. How have you not heard it? the many times we've talked about limestone being uh, a supernatural uh, like, magnet? It is. It's Large like, deposit of limestone under the ground can often We've talked about this? Yes. So many. The entire state of Florida oh, is say, limestone. Every time we talk about Florida. Oh, it was the Florida episode. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, not just the Florida episode. Multiple we, we, times we, we, we've, we've talked about this. but We definitely touched upon it. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yes. yes. Well, well, now we know JT doesn't pay attention to anything we say. Yeah, basically. <laughs> That's not entirely true. <laughs> <laughs> just not the pouring stuff. Right. Um, so he built the building out of limestone. He knew what he was doing. Anyways, and he wanted it to look uplifting, inspiring, but intimidating. Mm, <laughs> you know? Like an angry church. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> like an angry church. Oh, um, what's the angriest church y'all know of? Oh, gosh. Oh, Lord. Um, angriest church. I think that... Um, Notre Dame is pretty <laughs> angry. pretty yeah. angry. There's a church in uh, Barcelona, Spain that I saw. And what did you call it? Barcelona. 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 Okay. It's Castilian. Castilian. Spanish. Barcelona. Yeah. Barcelona. Barcelona. They, 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 yeah, it's th there. Oh. Yeah. Th anyway. Okay. Anyways. Um, uh, is Gaudi? Gaudi, right? Yes. Oh, God, yeah. The artist? Okay, cool. Is it Gaudi? Um, Gaudi? Gaudi? Gaudi. I, oh, I'm, I'm going to go with Gaudi because Gaudi it seems rude. I'm cultured, I promise. Um, so, <laughs> so, yeah, the um, it looks like it's melting. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I know exactly that, the one that you're that talking about. Yes, really dope. I feel there's like, there's a lot of angry uh, looking churches. Angry looking churches. I feel like every church in Russia is angry looking. Mm -hmm. Well, they they have to be. Because Russia's they, angry people looking. Keep, keep, yeah. People keep trying to tear them down. <laughs> True. Like, get back. <laughs> <laughs> there's also that church in Edinburgh that has the red shutters. <gasps> that's it. That's that's one uh, of yeah. the things that I, yeah. that's one of the churches that I was thinking of. The red shuttered church. And, oh my. And we asked lands. our tour guide when we were there. We were like, "Why the red shutters? It's, is there like a purpose?" For it? And they're like, "Cause it looks cool." And I'm like, you gotta I love, love the that Scottish. answer. That's I love that answer. Very that's great. direct. Love yeah. the Scots. Because it looks cool. And I'm like, it looks cool. I mean, it does. You're it right. looks Aye. really cool. That's a cool looking chart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, anywho, so um, the reformatory was originally called the Intermediate Penitentiary um, since it accepted inmates who were too old for juvenile corrections but had committed offenses more minor um, than those that sent others to the Ohio State Penitentiary. Interesting. So they were like, man, we got to keep these weird middle ground kids somewhere. Right. Late teens, early 20s kind of right. situations. But they weren't like murderers or yeah. like um, things like that. They they just got to so keep them So they were really keyed in on the reformatory right. yeah. concept. And so the uh, facility admitted its first inmates in 1896 after 10 years of construction. Wow. Um, so... The goal of the institution was truly to reform and rehabilitate its inmates who received three things during their time at OSR. Religion, education, and a trade. Um, so R-E-T. Religion, education, and a trade. Rit. Rit. Right. And we're so, gonna rent you. We're gonna rent you. <laughs> rent you. And so inmates were admitted for eighteen months, and if they showed progress, uh, they could be released after that time. Ooh. But if not, they received another eighteen months, and Ooh. the model was successful. And OSR had a high success rate and a low uh, recidivism uh, rate. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, interesting concept. I know. Uh, what happened to our justice system after that? Well, uh -huh. so, Dollars. Oh. You see, um, there are some yeah, problems. Those are Andrew Jacksons. That's Andrew Jacksons, right. <laughs> those Andrew Jacksons. Bloody, bloody Andrew Jacksons. Um, but the early 1960s, uh, however, the state pulled its financial support from the reform model and began converting OSR into a maximum security facility, mm. a purpose for which it was never intended. Wait, so hold on. We had something that was working, and then we turned it into something else. Yes. Like those um, um, jelly beans that you brought into right. our ghost mail. <laughs> anyway, continue. That what was happened? never intended. <laughs> we need more YouTube followers. <laughs> There's so got to be a better way. Subscribers, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, 
uh, please like and subscribe so we would stop have to, having to eat jelly beans. No, that no, taste that's like, only no, no. That you, what do you mean? So you can stop if that happens? We I see. I don't want to eat anything that tastes like dead rats or then whatever. Tell them to not subscribe. Uh, well, Wait, what? <laughs> no, because that's, that's counterintuitive. Kinda, because that means that you're going to feed me things wh- that are worse. Oh yeah, I'm you're eating right. centipedes. <laughs> I forgot I am. Then I'm going to actually evil. eat a dead yeah. rat. So. <laughs> Oh, Instead of jelly beans that are flavored as dead rats, we're eating actual dead rats. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, boy. We're going to reenact we the this. bubonic plague. <laughs> Next time y'all film this, you're going to see just like a cutting board. There's going to be a rat with intestines splayed out and it's different mm. organs, and you guys got to do different organs and spin for those. I do not like this. I actually, I like I actually that. think that would I hit. Okay, anyways. Are so, you two no. blow up? No. 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 We will be visited by the health department, no doubt. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. OSHA, where are you? Anyways. Bold for safety. Uh, so the reformatory was forced to accept inmates convicted of much more serious and violent crimes because of the maximum uh, security. And so the reformatory was getting crowded and overpopulated, um, which breeds conflict and disease. Mm. And at the time, uh, guards were even forced to double the occupancy in death row cells, which Ooh. in at least one instance resulted oh. in an inmate's death. Well, yeah. <laughs> During morning checks, guards noticed a prisoner missing from one of the cells. And upon inspection, the prisoner's body was found broken and stuffed beneath the bunk. Broken? Yeah. The body, the whole body was broken? <laughs> Just crack. That was a full bane snap of the back. I know. <laughs> I don't know. This is the Ohio State uh, Reformatory's website telling me this information. Oh. So maybe right they didn't the want to. Maybe they didn't want to give the details of how it was broken. Um, okay. But well, yeah. You know, when you're on death row, the concept of well, what are they going to do to me? Maybe he got smushed. You know, what are they going to do to me? Right. I see this guy, he's in my room, I don't like the way he breathes, crack, no more breath. <laughs> I broke him, what do you want? You give me a like new play thing, you... boom, I broke him, what? What are you going to do? Bro- oh, that's my, my Ohio accent, by okay. the way. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see. And so, um, in, the, uh, in another incident uh, before this, all the way in the 1930s, there was actually a riot that broke out in the East Cell Block. Um, the guards condemned 120 uh, rioters to share 12 solitary confinement cells for one what? week without food or water. And this punishment drove many to the brink of madness and death. In the 1930s, we were doing this. A lot of suffering, man. Yeah. It gets worse. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and so uh, by the 1980s, the conditions had deteriorated to the point where the inmates sued the state of Ohio, um, and they won. Uh, the law state was successful. <laughs> the, law, the lawsuit? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. It's been a long day for me, y'all. Excuse me. Uh, the lawsuit was successful, and construction began on a new modern facility nearby. Oh, okay. And so the reformatory was finally closed in 19- 19... So the prisoners sued, and what they got was a, another jail. <laughs> but, but a nicer jail. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Move to this jail. Right. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> And so, and so they uh, they closed the reformatory down in 1990, and it sat empty Ooh. for several years until local activists, who was activizing for the act activizing at uh, activating <laughs> what what's the word for it advocating advocating thank you. <laughs> it's been a long long morning. <laughs> I've read a lot of stuff today yeah. <laughs> to prepare for these. Anyways. Um, so local activists rallied to purchase the buildings from the state for a dollar and committed to repairing and restoring this historic structure. All, all right. for one dollar. Okay. I'll buy that for a dollar. Yes. Now on to the ghosty things. Ghosty. Yes. So uh, with it has tall ceilings, stone walls, and iron bars. It feels exactly like it did when it was an operating um prison they did not change much of it hmm. um and there was said to be around 154,000 inmates who passed through this uh, these gates in wow. uh it's 94 years as a working prison okay i mean that makes sense right yeah. but that does not include the keepers the wardens and the guards and the grave diggers so dun dun dun, 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 dun. Mm-hmm. um so 
There is a lot more going on in it uh, that y- than you would think. Uh, no matter what their crime was, some were s- uh, some sent to Mansfield have never left. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Wait, this is from the website? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they love it. I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm sure they do. They love it. They have paranormal investigations. They do ghost walks. They do history tours. They let you in the cells. Like, it's a fun time. Cool. If you live in Ohio, it's go, a party for all. Go visit it. Um, but anyway, so uh, there are lots of people who are buried and unclaimed in a super bleak graveyard just outside the fence. There are 215 numbered markers laid out uh, row on row, mm-hmm. but that is just the marked ones. There are said to be more bodies that are unmarked I'm out sure. of that graveyard. Oh, I'm sure. Naturally, most, naturally. Most were victims of disease, influenza, tuberculosis, but some died of less natural causes. Um, a lot of them died of violence, uh, which was really common inside the prison and was far from um, unknown in this one. Um, and the worst of it occurred well away from the main cell block uh, with their rows of cages, as the mm-hmm. uh, as the person likes to call them, cages. Well, yeah, I mean it's what they are. <laughs> yeah, stacked. Not what a cell is is a cage. Yeah, and um, most of those cages include inmates, uh, which were two to a cell, and so there were too many eyes because if you remember in Shawshank Redemption, it's like literally stacks on stacks on stacks mm-hmm. of just like a big open room from floor to ceiling full of uh, cells. Mm-hmm. So you can't kill somebody <laughs> in that area. Um, okay. You, there were too many eyes and too many witnesses. I see. So they were... So the whole thing is made out of lives, lives, uh, lime. The entire limestone. outside of the building is yeah. outside. Yeah. So the inside is like probably... Concrete. It's iron uh, and iron. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. Okay. But uh, so... Uh, a, a lot of the violence was reserved for this isolated area that was beneath the prison ground, a place called local control or solitary, and by some known as the hole. The ah, hole. The mm-hmm. hole. Yeah. Get us into the hole. Yep. And so it was near total isolation, um, but it can crack the, as they say, crack all but the toughest of cons. But none was so alone uh, that there wasn't room for death. Oh, boy. At least one inmate managed to hang himself. Another set himself on fire. Oof. One, may, uh, yeah, one time, two. You have to really want to be dead to <laughs> yeah. set yourself on fire. I mean, literally. There's no better way to do it. Like, yeah. I guess that's what they had at the, yeah. the time. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Well, especially at the very beginning of this being a prison, I could totally see them having, like, you know, sconces or something outside. I just, I oil just, lamp, I yeah. can't oil lamp. imagine the amount of suffering I'd have to go through to want to die the witch's death. Well, they did. So, jeez, yeah, it's hey. brutal. Now I'm in my head going, well, how would I do it? Oh, yeah. How would I do it? I'd and probably so, uh, I could take the the leg of the cot and just drive it through my. Probably. No, anyway. yeah. <laughs> so once two men uh, left too long in a single tomb-like cell, only one walked out, leaving his cellmate's body behind stuffed beneath a bunk. That was a oh. common thing, I guess, okay. here. Yeah. Um, oh, is that not just the one that oh, we were no. talking about earlier? <laughs> oh, no. This was the one that happened Where in the hole. Where else are you going to stuff them? This happened in the hole. The uh, other one just happened um, in the normal cell. I would like to point out that solitary confinement is not nearly as solitary when there's someone else in the room. Right. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, well, you know. Oh, yeah, I guess you caught the hole. Well, when it was overcrowded, you know, and you got multiple people that are needing to go to the hole. That's fair. Just shove them all into the hole. I see. And at least for one of them, it was a much worse sentence. Right, <laughs> exactly. And so. Um, what is the same guy? Just breaking people. <laughs> just breaking people. Crack. Um, so a lot of people, when they're inside of the building, they believe that there are people walking the halls, um, Mm -hmm. even though nobody's there. Uh, also one of the bloodiest incidents in the prison's history actually didn't happen inside of the walls of the prison. It happened to the warden. Oh, yeah. So... In July 1948, when the reformatory's farm boss, his wife, and um, daughter were kidnapped and shot to death by two parolees bent on revenge. Wow. That's a movie. I know, right? 
Um, a six state manhunt for the so called mad dog killers ended mad in, dog killers. in a shootout that left Robert Daniels of Columbus in custody and his partner James West dead. Mm. And so one of the uh, prison guards told the uh, to, told the police, actually, no, that's a different part. Excuse me. The guy who got caught, mm-hmm. Robert Daniels, he said, he, I'll get the chair. He wanted the electric chair. Yeah. So he told police that, and he signed the confession. And on January 3rd, 1949, he did. Um, a year later, in 1950, another disaster struck. Ooh. This time, here in the living quarters of the warden himself. The warden's wife, removing a jewelry box from a closet shelf, dislodged a pistol from its hiding place. When it hit the floor, the gun went off, inflicting a fatal wound. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's bad Suspicious. Luck. I know. Yeah, that's Where real, was the warden yeah. when this was going on? Well, there was more bad luck that would happen within the next decade. Wait, so, so she accidentally shot herself? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So she was pulling out a jewelry box, and the gun was hidden yeah. in there. It hit the ground, and it... Fired. Went off. Got it. Yeah. And she dies. That was the warden's wife. The warden, he would be hard at work in his office and suffered a heart attack and died. All of this was nearly 40 years ago. And a lot of people <laughs> believe that the warden and his wife actually haunt the um, prison. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I sure, I'm sure. Also, in Shawshank Redemption, the warden died in his office. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, from a self inflicted gunshot wound. Well, yeah, but still. <laughs> I mean, there's still death in an office. Right. Yeah, that's true. So a man and woman talking to faint understanding, uh, to persistent to ignore, uh, to faint, too faint to understand and too persen- uh, persistent to ignore and chilling to listeners who think they've, they're alone, only to find themselves apparently eavesdropping on the warden and his wife locked forever in an endless conversation from beyond the grave. Aw. I hope they're prison. happy. Yeah. Right. Unless, of course, the warden shot his wife. And right. <laughs> and then blamed, blamed it, it on, on an gun. accidental Discharge. Gun. So. I, my, my brain is like, well, what kind of gun was it? And yeah. How did the, it, unless like, I mean, unless like the see, hammer was that's back. what I was thinking. The hammer was back round in the chamber. It fell on the hammer. Right. And the hammer went forward. Maybe that's it was all a I shotgun. Think. Oh, yeah. Wait, did they say pistol or? They said pistol. Ah. Yeah. Because the, the uh, guard. yeah, mm-hmm. uh, chamber should be in the round. The hammer had to be back. It had to be back. Yeah, it had to be ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, some other ghostly things that have happened. Uh, the ghosts of these violent and maltreated men are not easily silenced. Uh, visitors and tour guides have been pushed and punched mm. by unseen uh, forces. Any of them broken and shoved under a bed. <laughs> 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 Not that I could tell. Um, that would make news, I would suppose. Also, <laughs> More people would talk about that. <laughs> also, this is the uh, building that ran Ghost Adventures out of it. Um, oh, yeah. Screaming and crying. Oh, yeah. So, Oh, they, they actually like left screaming and crying? I've never yes. seen Ghost Adventures. So. Yes. Uh, Ghost Adventures, allegedly, according to Travel Channel. Um, wow. They uh, left pretty quickly after arriving there. That's impressive, actually, given, I know. given the weight of their rep- reputation. Yeah. It is. It is pretty impressive. Um, Let's go. Yes, hmm. absolutely. We really should go. Yeah. Because I would like to see for myself some of the different things. For us to start doing things like that, we need more para-junkies. Para-junkies? Consider becoming a pair junkies so we can travel more. We're actually going to, uh, we're actually going to, uh, well, by the time this episode, you're listening to this episode, we're in Asheville filming pair junkie exclusives. It's true. Ooh. It is true. So, to, to do. Um, additionally, uh, witnesses have heard cell doors slam and seen dark apparitions, and even the road leading to Ohio State Reformatory seems haunted. And local legend suggests that there is a ghost named Phoebe Wise who, Phoebe uh, Wise. Phoebe who Wise. allegedly, That's a good name. Uh, I know, right? Who allegedly haunts the um, the prison? Uh, she's a transient spirit because she uh, did not die in the prison, uh, but she was known as the Mansfield Hermit. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so she uh, I didn't realize. Did she break people and shove them under beds? <laughs> I don't 
don't know if that guy's still here or not. <laughs> but um, did Phoebe sound like this? Hey, I took him, I broke him, I put him under the bed. I put him under the bed. It was it's breathing the, weird. It was breathing weird. So I, <laughs> I took care of it. I'm trying to find the ghost adventures thing on um on it to tell you a little bit more about the ghost adventures. But yeah. I, can a can a uh, a woman be a hermit? Why why am I thinking that's a male thing? Yeah, like, I, like, I, like I think in language, like is, I don't think there's a, like a hermitess. Is that what you're right. thinking? Hermitess, that there yeah, would be a or hermitess. something like that. I don't think there is, oh. but I think you're right. I, I think we hermits. we generally think of hermits as, as male. Yeah. Well, now I gotta look it up. I know. So some of the most haunted sites. Um, one are solitary confinement, aka the hole, uh, where all those people died because they burned themselves alive, or they hung themselves, or they did all that jazz. Um, all the cell blocks are basically haunted, both I'm east sure. and west, um, because that was the site where many murders and suicides. Hermitess. Well, there you go. Ah. Well, there you go. Um, yeah, so all the cell blocks are haunted uh, due to the many murders and suicides that took place in these areas. The admin basement is haunted uh, because there are two different entities down there. One's nice while the other is not, apparently. <laughs> I still don't doing know. paperwork. <laughs> still doing paperwork in the admin basement. Uh, I died to get away from this. Well, I mean, basement ghosts. We've talked about that basement before. Basement ghosts, yeah. You know, basement ghosts are not super, super friendly usually. Well, they don't. They, they, are, they are expecting to be left to... To their to the fate, right? And if you interrupt, you may be the reason why they're not moving to the next thing. So mm-hmm. they could be very aggressive, right? Uh, the West Attic, uh, it according to uh, the Mansfield Reformatory website, um, let's just say a very well known paranormal celeb had an experience up there and refused to go back in. I'm not going to say who it was. I'll just say that he grabbed his scarf and walked out. Is that Zach Baggins or no? That's uh, that's Ghost Adventures. I'm pretty sure that's who they're referring to. Zach Baggins doesn't wear a scarf, does he? I don't He's know. he wears V necks, doesn't he? Usually, although He's the most in time, singular like Ghost Hunter. Well, they're um. alluding. So help us put the pieces together on that one. Um, the chapel. This area has made many skeptics less skeptical. Lately, the ghosts have been getting uh, rather grabby up there, is Ooh. what they said. And then um, sub-basement. This area has provided some pretty wild experiences and evidence. This area was even avoided when the building was still in operation. Wow. Well, again, yeah. even further down into the ground. So, of course, the sub-basement's going to be like the most creepy and haunted location of them all you for know? sure no no i mean so do they let do they let people uh sleep there i like, don't know if they let you sleep there uh, i think they do overnight investigations let's see man yeah but i'm an old man i i could do overnight investigation I mean, till about 12 30 a.m sure and then i need a bed y'all i mean <laughs> like, i'm sure you could bring yourself a sleeping bag and while everybody else is ghost hunting you can go sleep in the sub basement with the gravity right. you're gonna that end up under right. a bunk with <laughs> <laughs> broken as long as it's dark and quiet you came down here to sleep <laughs> so i broke them and i shoved them under the bed <laughs> under the bed <laughs> so let's see if they do sleepovers <laughs> sleepovers oh so. let's have a sleepover <laughs> slumber party slumber par- uh, spinning the night spinning the night uh, spinning the night um okay so did, so did you i, I you might have mentioned it already but the execution chamber so the execution chamber i've not mentioned yet okay um, i execution chamber is um, surprisingly not the most haunted location. It seems to be mostly around the main section of You would the think that the execution chamber is going to be like the most not haunted Not necessarily. Spot, Keep in mind that inmates would not want to go to the execution, execution chamber. chamber. It would be the last place they'd want to be when they're alive. Well, so. Yeah, but I figured like the ones that are executed could potentially still be there haunting the spot because they can't You wouldn't leave. want to be in that place. You know? Right. Yeah. I mean, if you spent all your time fearing it, and then you're dragged to it, and then you die. Exactly. You wake up and you're like, I'm in the chamber. And yeah. 
So one of the most haunted places outside of the ones we've mentioned is the third floor middle admin. Uh, That's where a lot of people will see shadow people, um, audible voices, footsteps, and the feeling of not being alone. And that's the world fast. That's a really interesting concept that the execution chamber wouldn't be haunted because souls didn't want it. Right. But you would think where everyone was killed legally that it would be haunted it makes you had sense, a bunch of death. But you have all this dread going into it. You know you're going to die. In a lot of places where people haunt the, the place they died, they didn't know they were going to die. Mm-hmm. So they are, they're trapped there by the event and the shock of the event. But imagine sitting there knowing, so, two, in five days I'm going to be yeah. dead there. In four days I'm going to be dead there. In three days, tomorrow I'm going to be dead there. They're leading right. me to this place. And you spend all this time resisting the place. Right. Are there any other places like that where you wouldn't have a haunting. I guess I guess we've talked That's about cemeteries point. not being haunted sometimes. Right. I mean because right. yeah, and then and then obviously like the gallows, you know, right. like another execution chamber, but it's not a chamber, it's just more right. like where people were. Like um uh when we were in Edinburgh, we uh we were we went to the grass market. Mm-hmm. And that's where everyone was, you know, hanged, but yeah. Is it, it actually? It wasn't super haunted. No, um, did it feel haunted? Not particularly. Not I mean, the whole city feels haunted. But well, yeah, I, 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 that's an interesting point. Is um, even when you deal with like mm-hmm. uh, uh, places of execution where people haunt, nine times out of ten, the stories of a ghost there yeah. are people wrongfully accused. So people who huh. who feel that an injustice was done to them there. Um, so, you know, there might be some weight to that concept of what is our anticipation of an event? Like, if you're thinking that you're going to get out and, and, and you, you, you were innocent, you're innocent, yeah. you're innocent, and then someone flat out murders you versus, yeah, I did it. Yeah, this is the judgment on me. Yeah, I can't get out of it. Yeah, huh. there's no way to do it. So I don't know. I mean, that's an interesting it's, conversation. It's, it's, well, that's, that's partly why why our, our listeners listen to this show is because we we bring up stuff like that, and you know, the, it's just something that I've never thought of before. Of like right. an execution chamber being the most unhaunted place because no one wants to be well, there, even after death, even you, after death. Very well, weird. And especially when you got all that other room to like go <laughs> be other places in the building. Why would you stay in the execution? But a lot of times the yeah. morgue is oftentimes um, haunted. Uh-huh. Some people even say that certain morgue drawers are haunted and certain morgue places are haunted, which then brings about this notion of trying to continue life. Because uh-huh. sitting in a slab in the morgue and having any consciousness or any awareness of your, your, your space, it's the last time your body was really you know, handled. Or, yeah. or, so, so that's these are very... Interesting questions to expand on because yeah. it's like, I don't know, what is that? Uh, you know, um, exactly. Because I, I, I don't, you know, when I think of ghosts that haunt places that they were executed, uh huh. Um, they're usually stories of innocent people, yeah, or stories of un- unexpected death, yes, you know, um, you know, mob justice kind of things. Uh, so when you're sitting and waiting, mm-hmm. you've got a focal point. You say, I don't want to be there. Yes. That's, right. that's the last so place I want to be. Why would this prison be so haunted? Because no one wanted to be there. So well, couldn't we, they just leave? We talk mm-hmm. about the fact that misery becomes its own entity. Mm-hmm. That, the, uh, that people suffering exude their, mm-hmm. that, that quality about it. And that in itself is a triggering... Uh, um, mechanism for residual haunting, certainly. Mm-hmm. And in, as far as intelligent haunting, a lot of times it's about people who can't escape the yeah. notion of who they are or the notion of where they are. And they find themselves, you know, drawn to the place that they, that they're tempt, that they're so hard, that they tried in their life so hard to, uh-huh. to liberate from. And now they find themselves haunting that space because they never found the peace in their life to leave that space, mm-hmm. you know? And, okay. and so there's a lot of like prisons and uh, prisons and asylums have the same type of hauntings all the time. And a lot of times, and I think it's true here too. A lot of times, one of the things that people experience the most are staff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
what they experience is that clipping of feet going up and down the aisles, uh, the offices, the, the, the maintenance of the place. And I think that that is a result of other spirits, their perception of a sure. space. Sure. And what keeps them in their space and, you know, the guards walking back and forth right. and it things makes, of that nature. It makes me think that, you know, what we perceive as haunted, places that we perceive of as haunted are haunted in a different way. And what I mean is, like, with the Aoki Gohara forest, we, as people who are alive, f- probably fear that place or like you said the misery of that place makes us feel like it's haunted but most likely you're not going to have a ghost walking around that forest it's all mental for us we're all imagining that and because i think that i mean am i am i wrong about that i I think it's a little bit different with ayoki kahara because of the fact that that entire legend is steeped with like belief that the forest is what causes all of this sure but with the misery of it right but like you the, said mm-hmm. yeah but well and the people who go in with miserable intent mm-hmm. right. and the people who have misery i think uh, however by misery not people well so here's the thing <laughs> i think i i can't speak on ayoki gahara but at least with <laughs> this um you know it's more so, I think there's a lot of residual energy and a lot of residual entities because if you've noticed with everything that we've talked about, all these entities don't have names. They yeah, don't. They're have, just going about their daily routines. Yeah. So, so they're not anything with a conscious. Right. Yeah. Or they're not even. They're not even particularly souls. They're residual hauntings, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like just something that you would see, you know, right. out of the corner of your eye, but nothing that's going to actually try to hurt you. Well. Because, you know, it's, it, and that's not to say, because they do say that there's like grabby spirits, you know, and then there might be some spirits. And then they've got the, the Phoebe lady um, who, again, buildings made of limestone. If she was a hermit, she was kind of a weird outsider. It's not out of the realm of possibility that she just is like, I'm going to go be where all the other energy is. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and you know, something but, to keep in mind is that when we go into places that have this he- heavy, energy and this residual haunting is that we start to form shapes in sure. our mind. We, yeah. we, we, yeah. we, we attempt to identify them and attempt to give, and that is where the danger of like ghost hunting and, and, yes. and, and looking for those places are is because we're giving shape and form to shapeless, formless things. You know, we're basically holding up a, a, a jar that's in the shape of whatever we want and they'll pour that energy into it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they will utilize what we fear and anticipate and expect coupled with the energy of a place to really manifest something, you know, and, and that's not to say that you won't run into entities. That's not to say that there aren't these human figures, these tragic characters who are, but they're also waiting to tell their story. The reason they're still here is so something yeah. will encounter them and and define them and give them purpose past the point of their own lives. Um, so a lot of haunting could just be about the energies, oftentimes hopeless in life, uh-huh. looking for form and shape. Sure. And so that's one of the things that you have to really train yourself away from is thinking immediately of demon or thinking immediately of of destructive or horror because these spirits are like, I will do anything if you want to see me. You want to see me, I will, you need a, you need a monster. I I will be a monster for you. You you need something, you know, what you need of me to, to continue this conversation, to continue my purpose. Yeah. Because purposelessness has to be excruciating. You know, uh, just being, present without form or idea or notion and then along comes somebody who says oh you're suffering it's like yes i'm suffering yeah oh you're you know um, one-eyed pete is like yes i'm one-eyed pete and and then you start (laughs) to slowly become one-eyed pete and you're like oh there he is he's one-eyed pete Pete. because we are forming these shapes based on our fears, our knowledge. We go mm-hmm. researching, we find the yeah. stories, we come back, we're like, oh, look, you know, here's uh, Bob who keeps breaking people and putting them on their beds. Yeah. And you go there and you're like, ah, uh, there's Bob. It's just like the picture that I see. 
the sure. picture that is in my head that is now it just, being projected. It's just, and now I'm starting to think of the concept of what if miserable places aren't as haunted as we think and that they are kind of manifestations of our own minds and what we fear versus that Airbnb, that random Airbnb where there's an entity in there that from the episodes before, from the uh, episode, a couple episodes ago that pushes someone because it wants them out of their domain. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's usually what that's I'm how saying. you draw the line. Exactly. That's usually where you draw the line. You draw the line in intent that you anticipate yeah. versus intent that is, is independent. Exactly. Um, but that doesn't mean that they don't cross. That doesn't mean that they, that you won't have an instance where your expectations feed this entity. Yes. That doesn't mean that the entity wasn't intelligent. It doesn't mean the entity wasn't, yes. you know, wasn't present and had, had plans and, and, and ideas and iterations. But again, we go in expectantly. Sure. Um, but oftentimes when you hear about like ambush ghosts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Go into a place that you don't expect anything. Go into a place that you, then you're dealing with something that has, wants to be there. Has an agenda. That yeah. wants yeah. to be there. <laughs> that, that, That's that, the thing. That is independent. Absolutely. I am more, I'll tell you right now, I personally would be more afraid to stay a night in that Airbnb than in this prison by myself. Oh, absolutely. And that, that should tell, that in, in my mind tells me what like kind of helped me understand just now what is actually well, haunting. Well, you're, you're literally coming to the distinction of residual haunting and intelligent haunting. Yeah, exactly. Right. You, are, you, are, you are right at that crest of why we make that distinction. Exactly. Why we say a residual haunting, because residual haunting makes it sound like um, it is this vaporous... <sighs> Uh, uh, recording mm-hmm. that gets played over and over again mm-hmm. and is not open to interpretation. That's not entirely true. It is energy. It is mm-hmm. it is a type of energy. And it can easily become our perception point because we're sensing the misery. We begin to perceive things differently. And uh, we've talked about this before. Residual hauntings can, by our meddling, fuel an intelligent halting become mm-hmm. you know you could you could you could wager that if you've got uh, um, a, a little boy that people are, are seeing and it's doing the same thing over and over again and you become very fixated and focused on the little boy who keeps doing things because it's obviously a little haunting he's just going in and doing the same thing over and over again it is his lot in existence but the more you engage it and the more you try to manipulate and, and, and talk to it the boy could yeah. could either be inhabited by another spirit attempting to appear as the boy. You might actually draw upon the boy's actual essence and slowly break him from patterns that are residual. Yeah. And then it becomes intelligent. Now it becomes something right. communicative. Now it can kind of speak because you are actively conjuring the spirit based on what you see. Um, most residual hauntings are like recordings. But... If you pay it enough attention, give it enough weight, give it a name, give it, you know, find all these things about it, all of a sudden you can start getting information. Um, and you see this weird bridge sometimes where people have residual hauntings that they'll be talking about, you know, oh, this, you know, this yeah, woman yeah. goes from the barn to the house every night. A woman goes from the barn to the house. And you interrupt that pattern. Now you are engaging in it. Now you're giving it energy. Sure. You're giving it force. And now the woman is changing its, you know, path. It's now engaging in you in some way. Well, you've just taken a residual haunting and, and poured a little juice in it, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> given a, a, a little, little shape gas. to it. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I think that you're absolutely right in the sense of uh, when you go to a place that has, where all the stories are, footsteps, uh, uh, grabby yeah, grollies, right. pushy pushies, or, versus I was unsuspectingly sitting and something grabbed me or pushed me. Or, that's exactly. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like, it sounds like these spirits aren't territorial versus that one being insanely territorial. Well, think about the type of people who we're inhabiting this space, they aren't going to be territorial of a place, <laughs> that Over a place that's exactly awful that's that's in their point. existence. That's so. my point is like, is like we, we, we look so, you know, the, these TV shows, these ghost TV shows, they're all about these, you know, miserable places. But then it's like, is that really, is that really what's haunted? Well, and no, if you well, watch, it's haunted, just not in the way that people right. want it to be. It's, well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, there is a there's a big difference between famously haunted places and privately haunted places. Um, famously haunted places have been hammered mm-hmm. by expectation and been thinned out 
by how many people contribute. Mm -hmm. You know, you would think, oh, well, that means there's more power. It's like, well, yes and no. It means that the spirits don't need to present themselves as much because so many people feed the spirits. Yep. If you're feeding the spirits and you've got millions of people feeding the spirit, the activity will die down because the spirit doesn't need to do anything mm -hmm. to get your attention, to get that you know, uh, connection or that connectivity. Um, they're well-fed ghosts. They're well-fed ghosts. Don't feed the ghosts. <laughs> well-fed um, ghosts. Yes. Yeah. But uh, these private interactions, and, and gosh, you hear these stories of people yeah, like being pushed downstairs and mm -hmm. you know, things like that in these private small homes and these private small moments. And you're like, oh, that spirit's fighting to be there and has a, has a purpose. It's, right. it's, 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 it's the, uh, the quintessential intelligent haunt is the one that happens in small houses, in small places. Absolutely. So moral of the story is uh, it is haunted and it's creepy so go visit it by all means go visit we'll we'll probably oh, yeah. end up there at some point absolutely and you know and just because we say it's a residual haunting doesn't mean that it's not spooky and it's right. not creepy because right, it right, is right. still creepy any absolutely. type of paranormal encounter is kind of oogity boogity just not as intense of an oogity boogity Absolutely. Which, you know, we might visit. May not give you the wiggity wiggities. Exactly. And we may visit and we might find something that we didn't know about that. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, so take it with a grain of salt. But if you live in Ohio, definitely go to visit it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if you're passing through Ohio, go to visit it. But uh, with that, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. And my name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. Stay spooky, y'all. <laughs>